Last year when I shared all the sunflowers that I bought from Sunflower Selections, you were so excited and their website actually crashed. We found out that it was just some server issues, but I had a lot of you contacting me nervous that you weren't gonna be able to get your sunflowers too. And I can understand that because they have some incredibly exciting sunflowers. Here on our farm in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada, we grow flowers and veggies, which we sell here on the farm and also down at our local farmer's market. And if I could only grow one thing, that would be sunflowers. And if I could only grow one type of sunflower, that would be pro-cut sunflowers, which I would buy from Sunflower Selections. Last year on the farm, I planted about 10,000 sunflowers. We grew a lot of sunflowers. And part of that was I wanted to experiment with all the fun new varieties that I had purchased. I had such a hard time narrowing down my choices. There is so many, so many fun seeds available at Sunflower Selections. I went there planning to buy my Pro Cat sunflowers. I went there planning to find a double sunflower that I could grow and I left with way more than I needed. This year I'm being a little bit more refined, but I still have a whole, a whole box, a whole bucket of sunflowers, and there is easily 20,000 seeds in here because we are gonna grow even more sunflowers this year. As many as we grew last year, we're gonna grow that many again, maybe even double as much because we are going all in on flowers. But having experimented with a lot of different varieties last year, I now know which specific colors I want, which specific colors my customers down at the farmer's market respond to the best and which colors grow really well together. So let's get into it and go through everything that I have in this box. The Pro Cut Sunflower is the best flower to grow if you are growing them for cut flowers because they produce a single flower. It's called a single stemmed sunflower, which means it's just one stick that goes up, one bloom. You don't have a lot of buds. You don't have a lot of flowers. It makes for an absolutely perfect sunflower. If you are a home gardener, a single stem variety probably isn't what I'd recommend. Instead, I would grow a branching sunflower. That means one stem goes up, many flowers come off of it. You are able to pick off of a branching sunflower for you know a couple months. It's gonna produce blooms really nicely for you in your home garden, but it produces them slower and later. The thing that's so incredible about the Procut sunflower is the fact that it takes just 65 days. It grows so fast and the timing is like very, very, very precise on these sunflowers. I can plant an entire bed of them and they will all bloom out within a week, which is, which is pretty incredible for it to be so, so close, so concentrated, so true to its uh, days to maturity. As I said, I experimented with a huge variety of different colors last year. And my one that was my absolute most favorite never want to be without it ever again, is the gold light, which is also downy mildew resistant. The color on this was, I, I just love it. So the gold light has, has a lighter, almost green colored center. Instead of being the classic kind of yellow with a dark, dark, you know, round piece in the middle. It is all just bright and beautiful and cheery. For me, this was the, the, the summer sun in flower, in flower form. I love the look of it. I loved using it with bouquets. Sometimes the sunflower with the dark center, I find it can be a little bit too dramatic. It can almost overwhelm a bouquet using this gold light. I was able to blend it in really nicely. It, you know, if the flowers were small, it just looked like a yellow flower. It was very versatile for using in my market bouquets. Because I plan on planting these all season long, I have three 
thousand of them. And I actually have some of these left over from last year. I probably have almost a thousand left over from last year. So I have the ability to have up to 200, 200 of these growing every single week, harvesting every single week during my season without having to worry at all about running out of seeds. But that's a yellow sunflower. And you have to have the orange sunflower. You can't have just the yellow. The orange sunflower is, you know, that's that's the standard. When people think of sunflower, it's that dark center, that rich colored petals. So the orange that I'm growing this year is Orange Excel. Last year, the orange that I grew was the orange downy mildew resistant. The difference between that flower and this one is that the Excel blooms five days earlier. And with what I was already telling you about how fast the pro cuts are to have one that's actually going to be blooming almost a week earlier than than its uh, friends. This has me very excited. I'm also excited for that little bit of variation in bloom time because it means that I can now plan succession planting that only has me planting every two weeks instead of every week. If the only sunflower I grew was only orange XL or only gold light, I would need to be planting these flowers every week in order to have blooms every week. But because I'm going to be growing the two of them together, I can safely plant these two together every two weeks. And then when they bloom, first I'll have the orange start and as they finish up, the yellow will come in. It means every two weeks I'm planting, but I have a two week window for harvesting. Because I plan on also growing the orange all season long, I bought 3000 of these as well. The next pro cut that I got is the plum pro cut. Last year I had a few other colors and I really wanted to narrow in my choices. Instead of having a different color every week, I wanted to be able to, you know, be a little bit more consistent. So I grew red and I loved it, but plum was the one that I found was the most versatile. The plum actually is, you know, kind of a two tone. So because of that, I could blend it with a lot of things. Um, you know, the name is implying that's kind of a purpley, you know, being plum. Um, and so I found that it could blend with kind of those purpley tones, um, but it, it really, it really looked nice with the colors that I use in my fall palettes. So things like the brown amaranths or the burgundy amaranths, darker colored foliages. We do a cinnamon basil, um, which I, I think it looks really nice against, you know, but then still it could blend really nicely with the yellows. It kind of has a few of those yellowy tone, classic sunflower tones. I found the plum to be very versatile for me to work with. So it seemed like the best choice to put into my rotation. I only bought 2000 of the plum because my plan with the plum is that it isn't going to be grown earlier in the year. It's going to only be grown for the back half of the year. And that's because this is going to look a lot nicer in those more fall tones. I can still blend it really nicely in summer, um, but it's, it's not necessarily going to be how I start my season with sunflowers which logically transitions to what I am going to start my season with sunflowers. And that is the white light and the white night. These, if you, if you've never seen these in person, these look so cool. These are so unique. This is a white sunflower. And I know sometimes in pictures it can seem creamy, almost, almost like it's a, like a very light yellow, but it is very white. It looks very white, um, in person. And so last year I had the white light and the white light has a lighter color center and I loved it. It sold really well. People would often ask, what is this? It was, it was some of the best selling bouquets when I had the white light. Um, People were so excited about it that I have to get the White Knight. The White Knight has that darker center, the classic black sunflower center. And because of that, it makes it very dramatic, very punchy. Um, so I think that I can really play up the drama of the white and the black together, um, make some really interesting bouquets with it. So we're, we're giving it a try this year. I bought 2000 of each of these. And my plan is I'm going to have these be in the spring. You know, I'm, I, 
Still, I'm going to be growing all the classics, but instead of doing those darker tones in the plum, I'm going to start the season with the white sunflowers. And this is when I'm going to be playing with those black centered ones. I know for sure white light uh, sells well. Let's see if people are maybe even more excited about uh, white night. So I'm going to start the season. Lots of white is going to be in the mix. Then I'm going to fade out of this. I'm not going to have very much of this in the summer and I'm not going to have very much of this in the early fall. But I found this last year, not, not with uh, the white night specifically, but I planted a bunch of jade, which is a white sunflower too. The jade isn't a pro cut, so it doesn't have that, you know, true um, fast, Tr like very, very uh, accurate days to maturity. Um, and Jade is also a branching sunflower, if I remember correctly. Um, and so I planted it very, very tight. So they were single blooms and I had a lot of Jade in the fall when I kind of didn't have as much. Um, and they started to sell really well. In general, people don't wanna buy white bouquets from me, um, but I think because there wasn't as many colors, things start to get a little bit more limited in what's available. People kind of liked the classic calmness of the white flowers. And so they, they did really well. So I'm, so I'm excited to see if these will do the same for my next fall. And finally, my last pro cut, I got a thousand pack of red. The red was stunning. The red was really incredible. It almost looked like like a burgundy brown. It was very dark, very rich. Um, I think it was even darker than it maybe would be because I grew the red in into the into the fall. So because it had less daylight hours, you know, my days were getting shorter at that point. Um, I think it brought out really dark, dramatic colors. And even the foliage on the red kind of had this like deeper, richer, you know, you could see that the plants before they flowered were different on the pro cut reds. Um, so I have another pack of this and this I will be growing again for the fall. Um, this I don't think it's as versatile as the plum and that's the reason why I only have a small pack of it. It's it's going to be a, a limited run. Um, you know, but I, I did really like it. I found that the red grew smaller flowers when I grew it and that I think is a good chance is because of me. I think maybe that I have my spacing too tight on the red sunflowers um, but so I, I need to grow it again so I can learn a little bit more of it. Maybe if I grow it um, a little bit earlier, maybe if I grow it with a little bit more space, um, it will it'll change the look of it. So I'm, I'm really excited to experiment with this. The classic sunflower Everyone recognizes it, everyone loves it. I can sell it really well. And that's the reason why I have a lot of them, you know, especially that gold light and the orange. But if you wanna have some drama in your sunflowers, then what you need to grow is you need to grow some of the doubles. And so the double that I have, I have 5,000 seeds of this one because um, I, I need a lot of this because I want a lot of this, is double quick. And these, they, people often don't know what this is when I bring it down to the farmer's market. People will see it in the bouquet, it'll catch their eye, and they'll want to know, what is this? What is this? And it's a sunflower, you know, it just, it, it looks so different. It looks so dramatic. Um, and so I, I love it. I want this every single week to play with. I can sell this really, really well. I bought a variety of double sunflowers last year and double quick wasn't the one that I was the most excited about, but double quick was the variety that was a single stem. The rest of the double varieties that I grew were a branching sunflower. And so that means that you can get more cuts off of them, but they produce later, as I mentioned earlier but it makes it a little bit more difficult to put it into the rotation with my pro cuts. My pro, pro cuts are so accurate for how quickly they bloom. Um, and what often when I'm planting my sunflowers, I'm planting, you know, a whole bed, 400, 400 plants uh, into a single bed, and I'm doing a hundred of 
four different colors. And so I found it very difficult to have these branching ones, the pro cuts would finish, and then I'd have this small section of the bed that, you know, would then take maybe another month. It just, it's a lot easier for me in my rotations and in how things work on the farm, if everything's a little bit closer in time. And so because of that, I'm doing the I'm doing the single stem for the double. I'm doing the double quick because it has timing very similar to the Pro Cuts. It's a little bit later, you know, it's kind of like what I was saying earlier. I'll first I'll have the orange, then I'll have the gold, you know, then I'll have the double. It'll kind of be a little bit staggered in my plantings with planting them at the exact same time. But it's tight enough that I don't have to worry about, you know, these blooming out, you know, month after the rest. I also really liked the shape of the double quick. A few of the other doubles that I grew, um, they kind of, they had the full fuzzy centers and then they had like longer petals on the outside. But I found that the double quick looked a lot more perfect. One of the things that always, you know, blows my mind about the pro cuts is the pro cuts don't look real. The pro cuts look like a fake flower. <laughs> like they, they're too perfect almost. It's, it's hard for me to, to know what I'm even looking at when I go out into the field and I'm seeing 400 of them blooming and they're all perfect. They all look exactly the same. And it doesn't matter if you're picking them in the spring or if you're picking them in the fall, they're all so uniform. It's one of the things that makes them so great as cut flowers. Um, and so the double quick I found had a lot more of a uniform, uniform look to it. One of the things though about growing this is it's hard to know when to pick it. Um, and if you leave it too late, what I found is the head would start to go from being like a flat, flat flower to kind of curved, right? And the petals would kind of blow back. And so it would kind of turn into this, this baseball shape. And that looked nice out in the field, but when I had it in the bouquets, the, the curved shape of it um, made it look sloppy, made it look a little bit messy. And so I didn't, I didn't like it in the bouquet. So I had to be, um, I had to be very good about picking them at the right time, but they're a little, you know, they're a little bit more tricky to know when to do. The pro cuts, you know, the, the petals, they just start to open, you pick, you know, a little, it's easier to lose track of when to pick on the doubles. And because I'm obsessed with the doubles, I get, I just, I couldn't limit myself to one. Last year, the double that I was the most obsessed with was Starburst Green Burst. It, it looks so cool. The center is very green. Um, green I'm, I'm in love with green, it's my favorite. So I, I loved having those different tones. You know, it looked so unique from, you know, that, that darker center to have it, have it be green like that. And they did, they look great. I bought a lot of them. I, I bought a lot last year. And so because of that, I still have lots. As I was saying, the doubles, they didn't really grow very well together with the pro cuts. That's the reason why I have the double quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have in a whole bed, give them, give them a little bit more space of the Starburst series, and then I'll be able to pick them as a branching sunflower. So instead of, you know, planting them every two weeks, I'll kind of have one planting, maybe two plantings that I'll do. And it's gonna be mixed with the other colors. Gotta have green burst, I love the green burst, but I also grew the panache and I ran out of it. So I needed to buy more of that. And so I got a hundred pack because I, I really don't need very many when I'm, when I'm spreading them out. Because they're branching, you know, a single seed instead of growing a single flower will now grow, you know, many flowers on the same plant. So I, I didn't need to have a ton of these. And then I also got Lemon Aura. And yet again, I got a hundred pack of this. So I, you know, I'm thinking I'll have 200 of the green burst, a hundred of the panache, hundred of the lemon aura. I'll have this nice planting of these fun doubles, something that looks unique and different that I'll be able to have special treats to play with. Um, but, and these, these are the ones, this, you know, this, this starburst series, if you are a home gardener, these are the ones that I would be recommending that you grow because this is, this is one of those branching ones and they they look so cool guys they they look like no sunflower you've ever grown so highly highly recommend and then the last thing i bought is sunfill 
green. And these have a little bit of a backstory. The sunfill sunflowers are developed so that you use them before they open. You don't let them bloom, you use them as this, this bud. And they're, they're a filler, that's why they're called sunfill. Um, they, they put this really cool textured piece into a bouquet. You know, it almost, it almost has the appeal of an artichoke in a bouquet. It just, it looks really interesting great color, great texture. So I really wanted, I really wanted to try them out. I really wanted to see what they did, what they grew like. The problem is when I planted them out, I didn't label them very clearly. And so as a bud, they look almost identical to the pro cuts. And you know, when I was out in the field and I had all these pro cuts blooming, you know, I knew, I knew the sun fill was in there somewhere, um, but I, I didn't know what was what. And it made me realize, well, you know, I have all these pro cuts at any point, if I want to, you know, have this fun little filler, I could cut a pro cut and use it that way. And, and I did cut a few and they seemed to keep, it seemed like it wasn't causing any vase life issues to cut them as this bud. Um, so what ended up happening is my sun fill bloomed out and you're not supposed to let them bloom. They, they, everyone talks about them specifically, they, that they're horrible, they're ugly as soon as they bloom, they're garbage, but I loved them. I loved what they looked like blooming because they, you know, I, I joke here on our channel that my niche of flowers is ugly flowers that that I'm going to grow. I'm going to grow all this stuff that most people don't normally find, find to be their favorites and find to be the most attractive. Um, but the thing that I loved about the Sunfill isn't that it was an ugly flower. It's that it was very structural, very architectural. Um, it ended up being this disc. It was like this perfect sunflower disc with like spikes all around it. So it ended up blending really nicely with sunflowers. It looked, you know, like a sunflower, but it also looked like something you'd never seen before. So in, in the same way that the sunfill as a bud was supposed to be kind of a filler, I found that that the, the sunfill bloomed out, blended really well with my sunflowers to kind of give this, this different look. I, I was making something that I called Van Gogh, Van Gogh bunches, and they were a blend of sunflowers and rubecchia, just, you know, a whole, all the, all the textures that I could possibly get in that sunflower look all together. And when I had the sun fill specifically to be part of that, you know, just a single one of these weird looking discs kind of took them from just being a simple bunch of sunflowers into like really looking like those Van Gogh bouquets. Cause some of those sunflowers in, that he painted and you know, the classic with the vase and everything, like they don't look like what, you know, sunflowers look like. And so I, I just really loved it. So, even though you are 100% not supposed to do this, I have a thousand sun fill and I am gonna be planting them to let them bloom. And I'm gonna be having some of those for in the summer for doing specifically these Van Gogh bouquets. I can't wait for sunflower season to be back again. It really means summer for me here on the farm because it's one of those ones that we kind of don't plant until the weather warms up. So at this point, I'm just having to be patient uh, to, you know, not be too too antsy about when I'm gonna be planting them. They, uh, I'll start planting these probably in April, um, but so very, very long wait. If you'd like to know more about sunflower selections, I suggest you check out the video that we did last year. We talk a little bit more about, you know, the experience of shopping on the website and, you know, more, more about the varieties. You can see all the things that I bought last year, or I will put a link to, to the website. If you, if you're ready to go buy everything that I bought, um, down below in the description.